One of the most integrated features of optical flares is the ability to position a lens flare in 3D space or on a 3D light. So if we take a look at this example, you can see the lens flare is pretty large and then when it goes off into 3D space, it gets a little bit smaller. So it automatically calculates the position and you can really do some amazing things. So let's take a look at some of the different features of the 3D lens flare and see how they integrate into some real world examples. First, let's take a look at how easy it is to set up a lens flare in 3D space. So here I have a basic scene in After Effects where I have my 3D layers and I also have a 3D light in my scene. So pretty straightforward. Now I have a solid here and I'm going to apply optical flares. So I'm going to choose Effect, Video Copilot, Optical Flares. So right away it starts out as a 2D lens flare and that means I can move it around in X, Y space. But if I want to make it 3D, all I have to do is change the positioning mode from 2D to track lights. And this way, if I move the light around, the lens flare will follow it. So if we orbit around the scene, you can see the lens flare stays in 3D space. But what's cool is we can simply duplicate the light and move it. And now we have another light that exists in 3D space and another lens flare is automatically generated. And the cool thing is we can go into the settings for the light, like maybe the light color, and if we change that, the lens flare actually takes on the colors of the light. So it's very cool and a very powerful way to work with 3D lights. Now here's another scene I've set up using the foreground occlusion. So if I orbit my camera around, you can actually see that I have lights in between the 3D layers. but they actually block the lights when they get in front of it. So it's a pretty cool feature and uh, just helps you as you're compositing and setting things up. Now I'll also point out if you change your view from the active camera to say the top view, the lens flares actually render on the 3D lights. So this really helps to position things properly when you're using those orthographic views. Now if we take a look at this missile strike scene, I want to kind of show you some more of the advanced features. So I've simplified the scene a little bit with the particle system so that it renders a lot faster uh, for this demonstration, but should work just the same. So I'm going to take one of my lights and I'm going to change the color of the light. So I'll hit AA and we'll change the color from blue to maybe green and we'll hit OK. Now the particle system is also set up to link to the light color so that everything is kind of working together. So if we select our optical flares layer you can see the positioning mode is set to track lights. Now I'll go ahead and lock this effects control window so that if I move my lights around, it'll stay up there while we play around. And you can see that it's set to use light intensity. So if we were to play around with the intensity of the light, the lens flare will actually get bigger and brighter. Here's another example where we're using optical flares to generate a concert scene and volumetric lighting. So if we just kind of scrub through this, you can see we have some 3D lights that are off in the distance and it just looks like this really exciting scene. Now if we take a look at my After Effects scene, you can see I have a bunch of 3D lights positioned in 3D space. And if I take the Orbit Camera tool and fly around, you can see that the lights are just randomly positioned in 3D space to kind of create a stage-like concert scene. Now what's cool is there's two types of lens flares. There's lens flares that look like spotlights and then there's just large lens flares. And the way that's set up is by changing the name of the lights. We have A light and we have B lights. And so if we scroll down here we have two copies of optical flares. We have optical flares A and optical flares B and they're both on but if I just shut off the B and only show the A flares you can see that these are the ones that look a little bit like spotlights. Now let me go and hide the lights, Control shift h So optical flares is again set up to track lights and it's also set to use a name that starts with A. So all of the lights that start with A will use this lens flare. Now if we look at the optical flares B, we can turn it on and shut the other one off, you can see that it's set to track lights and use the name that starts with B. So I could actually go in here 
into the options, make some adjustments to my lens flare, maybe uh, maybe add a big streak, hit OK. So now we have a streak on all of our lens flares and those aren't being affected by all of the A flares. So that's how you can have multiple lens flare types in the same scene. And finally, what about using optical flares with your 3D rendered scene files? So, as many of you may know, you can actually export your scene data into After Effects. So in this case, I've rendered out my scene. So this is just an image sequence. And then, using various exporters, Cinema 4D actually has a built-in way to export the scene files and lights right into After Effects. 3D Max also has a few solutions. So here we have the lights from my original 3D scene right inside of After Effects. So then, I can turn optical flares on, set it to track lights. Okay, look, I intentionally made this blindingly bright, so uh, you know I apologize. But instantly the lights track to the lights in your scene, and if you use something like dynamic triggering, you can get some cool effects around the edges. Um, you can also see that the light goes behind the ball and obscures the light. So what I've also exported is a mat of that object and then use that in optical flares so that it blocks it out as it goes past it. So really, you know, we can play it a little more subtle and just have some, some light lens flares, but hey, if you're going to do it, go all the way. No, just kidding. Don't, you know, overuse them. If um, Spider-Man's uncle has taught us anything is that uh, with great power comes great responsibility. So uh, remember that. Okay, well that's our quick look at the 3D lens flare feature of optical flares.